Today we are going to see about microprocessor architecture and its operations, microprocessor initiated operation and 8085 bus authorization. Microprocessor architecture and its operations. Uh, microprocessor is a programmable device that takes in numbers, performs on them some arithmetic or logical operations according to the program stored on them and then produce some other numbers as a result. So the uh, microprocessor is nothing but a programmable device. We can program it according to our needs. The basic concept we need to know before uh, we uh, getting into our topic is, uh, we must need to know the difference between the microcomputer, microprocessor and the microcontroller. So the microcomputer is a computer with a microprocessor as its CPU including memory, I.O., etc. Same way, microprocessor is nothing but a silicon chip which includes uh, arithmetic logic units, registers, executes, and control units. Microcontroller is a, again a silicon chip but which includes microprocessor, memory, and I.O. in a single package. So, in the microprocessor, just it contains only the uh, Arithmetic logic units and uh, register circuits will be present separately, but in microcontroller, everything will be present inside the single chip. Next, we are going to into the topic microprocessor architecture and its operations. So, microprocessor is a programmable device designed with the registers, flip flops, and the timing elements. Uh, it has a set of instructions designed internally to manipulate the data and communicate with the peripherals. So the process of data manipulation and communication is determined by the logical design of the microprocessor. So the logical design is we call this an architecture. So microprocessor is nothing but a programmable device. Uh, device. It will contain registers, flip-flops and the timing elements. It has a set of instructions designed internally to manipulate the data and communicate with the peripherals. So the process of this communication and manipulation will be determined by the internal logic of the microprocessor. So we call this uh, logic, uh, internal uh, logical design as an architecture. The microprocessor uh, will read only one instruction at a time, then it will match the instructions with the, uh, with the instruction set and perform some uh, manipulations indicated by the instructions. So the functions performed by the microprocessor, we can classify into three categories. First one is the microprocessor initiated operations, uh, internal data operations, and the finally peripheral or externally initiated operations. So to perform these three operations, microprocessor must need some group of logical circuits and a set of signals called the control signals. So the term microprocessing unit can be referred, uh, referred as this group of uh, devices that can perform these functions. So for performing a process, microprocessor need logical circuits and control signals. So for, uh, so the microprocessing unit, uh, uh, we can call this term, the term microprocessing unit as the device group of device that can perform these functions which are necessary uh, set of control signals. The same way that uh, similar to the MPU, uh, we can uh, use the CPU. So CPU and MPU are uh, more or less similar. So the in microprocessor is a, but the microprocessor is a single chip integrating all the functions of a CPU of a computer. So it's a difference. So we can compare the CPU uh, and the microprocessor, but uh, here in microprocessor, everything will be contained in a single, uh, will be integrated in a single chip. So uh, if, uh, what are the functions the CPU are doing may be done by the microprocessor, but it will be present inside a single chip. And the next topic is about the microprocessor initiated uh, operations and the 8085 bus organization. Microprocessor uh, primarily performs four operations, uh, memory read, memory write, then I will read, I will write. So for performing these operations, uh, uh, the, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a part of a communication between the microprocessing unit and the peripheral devices. So to communicate with the peripheral devices, microprocessing unit need to perform the following steps. 
So first one is it need to identify the peripheral or the memory location. Then it must transfer the binary information. Then the, in the step three, it want to provide timing or the synchronization signals between the peripheral and the microprocessor. So for doing these three operations, microprocessor needs some communication line that is the bus organization. So next we are going to see about the 8085 bus organization. 8085 microprocessor perform the above three functions using the three sets of communication lines called the buses. The group of three buses called the system bus. So first one is the address bus, the data bus and the control bus. So using these three buses, the microprocessor can communicate with the peripheral devices for doing the operations. So oh, it's the bus, uh, 8085 bus architecture. So here, this is the 8085 microprocessor. Here we are having an address bus, then the data bus and the control bus. The address bus, uh, the address bus is having uh, A0 to A15 lines. So totally 16 lines for, tra for transferring the address bits. Then uh, in, here is a data bus. It is uh, denoted as in D0 to D1. So it's actually passing in uh, eight uh, bits, eight lines to transfer the eight bits of data at a time. Then the control bus for controlling this uh, operations. Here the address bus is an unidirectional bus. So the data is transferred from uh, microprocessor to the other peripheral devices, whereas the data bus is an bidirectional bus. So it can transfer the data in the both sides of the microprocessor as well as the peripheral devices. So control bus is used for controlling the uh, process that read or write operations, whatever uh, the microprocessor is intended for to do. Next is the, uh, the address bus. So it's nothing but a group of 16 lines indicated as an A0 to A15. Then it's an unidirectional bus. Here the data flows in the one direction from the microprocessor at the peripheral device. The microprocessor uses the address bus to perform the first function that is identifying the peripheral array memory location. The next is the data bus. It is a group of eight lines indicated as D0 to D7. The data bus is a bi-direction one. So it's the data flows in a both direction between the microprocessor and the peripheral devices. So the microprocessor uses this data data bus to uh, make the data uh, data flow from for the second function that is transferring of the binary instructions. Next comes the control bus. So control bus is used for synchronization signals and timing signals. So on the control signals, it, uh, the control bus consists of four to 10 parallel signal lines. So the CPU sends out the signals on the control bus to enable uh, the output of an address, uh, addressed memory device or the port device. So if we are referring to a uh, particular uh, peripheral device, it will be enabled. If you are referring a memory, that memory address would be enabled. If you are referring an output device, it will be enabled. Example, uh, memory read, memory write. So microprocessor uses the control bus to perform the third function, providing the timing signals. For example, to read an instruction from a memory location, uh, we can use the control signals memory read. Now we are going to see about the topics, internal data operations and the 8085 registers and the peripheral initiated operations. Internal data operations and the 8085 registers. The internal architecture of the 8085 or the 8088 microprocessor determines how and what operations can be performed with the data. So, for performing these operations, uh, it will do the following things. First, it will store an 8 bit data, perform some arithmetic and logical operations, and it will test for some conditions. Then it will sequence the execution of the instructions, then store the data temporarily during the execution in a defined read-write memory locations called the stack. So these are the things that uh, internally the 8085 or the 8080A microprocessor will do. So that is storing, then performing some arithmetical or logical operations, then test for the conditions, then sequence the execution, and then uh, finally storing the data temporarily while doing some operation, doing some operations in the memory, which is called as a stack. So 
to perform these operations, microprocessor will require the following case. The registers, arithmetic logic unit and control unit, internal bus, that's the path for an information flow. So the, this is the programmable register of an H085. Here, this is the diagram. Uh, this is the accumulator, which is an 8-bit. Then uh, near the accumulator is a flat register, which is also uh, size of 8-bit, but only the 5 bits in the uh, flat register will be used to store the bits. Then below this are the uh, six registers, B, C, D, E, H, and L registers. The, uh, these registers can store 8 bits uh, accordingly. These are called the general purpose registers. Then below that are the stack pointer and the program counter. These two are the 16-bit registers, which are used to store a 16-bit memory address. Then the, here is the data bus for transferring the data to and from the microprocessor. Same way, address bus is a 16-bit uh, line. It's a unit directly for transferring the address from the microprocessor. So the register, so there are six general purpose register to perform the operations. It will store an 8-bit data. Uh, they are, uh, um, these registers are called the namely B, C, D, E, H and L and in pass B, C, D, E and H L to perform the 16-bit operations. It could be viewed as a memory location. So if we are uh, uh, using more than 8 bits, that is the B, C, D, E, H L register will store the only 8 bits. If we need to store more than 8 bits, we can combine these registers as in fact B, C, D, E and H L. And we can store in 16-bit uh, memory locations in this uh, general purpose register. Next comes the accumulator. So accumulator is also an 8-bit register. It's a part of an arithmetic logic unit. This register is used to store an 8-bit data to perform arithmetic and logical operations. Uh, the result of this uh, arithmetic and logical operation will be stored in an accumulator. So the so accumulator is the register which will receive the input as well as it will store the output. So next comes the program counter. So program counter is a 16-bit register. As we know that program counter is usually used for sequencing the execution of instructions. Uh, then this is a, a register that points to the memory pointer. So it will use to sequence the register that is the next instructions to be executed. So the microprocessor will follow the um, address stored in the program counter to execute the next instruction after completing the current instruction. The function of the program counter is to point to the memory address for which the next byte is to be fetched. Next is the stack pointer. This is a 16-bit register. Uh, this is also a 16-bit register like the previous one. It, uses, it is also a memory pointer. It points to the memory locations in the uh, read-write memory called the stack as we store some data temporarily during the arithmetic and logical operations. So the stack pointer will point to that particular uh, locations. Here, the beginning of the stack is defined by, an six, by loading a 16-bit uh, stack pointer. The next come the flag register. The flag register are used to reflect the data conditions in an accumulator. So as we see that the output of the arithmetic and logical operator, uh, operations will be stored in an accumulator. So after the result is stored, the, depending on the values, the uh, flags in the flag register will be affected. So in 8085, uh, there are uh, five flags, sign flag, zero flag, axiary carry flag, parity flag, and carry flag. So the flag register contains five bits that are used as a flags or an indicator. So here, uh, yes means the sign bit, uh, that is, if the value stored in a accumulator, that is, result is positive, or we can find out whether it is a positive or negative value. If it is a logical one, then it is a negative value. If it is a logical zero, then it is a positive value. So if the sign bit contain one, it is a negative one. If it is contain zero, it is a positive value. Then Z means a zero flag. If the value in the Z flag is one, then the result is zero. If it is zero, then the result is uh, one. Then the axillary carry. So axillary carry means the if it is logical one, there is a carry bit from the third bit to fourth bit. If it is logical zero, then there is a no carry from carry. Then P means a parity flag. So parity means a number of ones in the accumulator. If the number of ones in the accumulator is even, then the parity bit will contain one. 
if the number of ones in the accumulator is odd, then the parity bit P will contain zero. Then CY means the carry flag. So if it is uh, one, the flag register uh, will uh, designate bit position for the carry. So if the uh, result, uh, the, uh, if the accumulator contain and carry bit after the particular uh, arithmetic operation, then the carry bit will be set. So this is the flag register. Here the five bits are used, the other three bits are uh, not used. The next one is the peripheral or externally initiated operations. So the peripherally or externally initiated operations is an external device can initiate some of the operations uh, to a microprocessor. For example, reset, interrupt, ready, and fold. These are the four uh, signals that can affect the um, microprocessor from externally. So reset, when reset is activated, then all the internal operations are suspended and the program counter is cleared. So for example, if you want to stop the process what the microprocessor is doing, we can use the reset uh, uh, signal so that it will uh, suspend all the process and will clear the program counter. Next is the interrupt. Uh, interrupt means uh, microprocessor can be interrupted from its normal execution and asked to execute other instructions called the service routine. Uh, the microprocessor resumes its uh, operation after that. That is, if you want to stop some uh, execution for temporarily, then do some other process and after completing it, if we want to continue the previous one again, we can use the interrupt signal. But in the reset, the previous uh, process will, will be stopped uh, completely, but here it will be temporarily stopped and we can resume it again when we use the uh, interrupt signal. The next one is the uh, ready. Uh, the H085 pin has a, uh, has a pin called ready. If the signal is low, then microprocessor will enter into the waiting state. We are using this signal mainly when the microprocessor is communicating with a peripheral device, which is lower than the microprocessor, uh, we can use this steady signal. So when the microprocessor enter into the waiting signal, then the, the, this is used to indicate, uh, used for synchronizing the slower peripherals with the microprocessor. So when microprocessor transfers some data to a slower peripherals, then a ready signal will be uh, enable that it will become low so that microprocessor will wait till the receiver receives it. Next one is the hold. When the hold pin is activated by an external signal, microprocessor releases its control buses and allows the external peripherals to use them. So mainly we will use while the, the DMA access, that is a direct memory access. So hold is a uh, signal. It will be external, external signal. It will be given to the microprocessor for requesting for its buses. So when the signal is coming from an external device, microprocessor will, will relinquish its control buses and allow the external peripherals to use them. For example, the whole signal is used in direct memory access data transfer. 